Let's review a mutual inductance uh, network. In this particular problem, we're being asked to find the current I naught right here. And for mutual inductances, there are just a couple of things to remember, and then it's um, just the normal noises. First of all, usually we're going to apply mesh equations to solve. And this is the big rule that you want to remember. Um, a current entering the dotted terminal of a uh, magnetically coupled inductor will create a voltage in the opposite inductor such that the um, positive side of the voltage is on the dotted terminal. And that works vice versa. If the current were to enter the undotted terminal on one inductor, then the voltage would be positive on the undotted terminal of the other inductor. Uh, finally, uh, you write your KVL equations, keeping that in mind, and solve them. Okay, And you're hopefully always going to have some mutual inductance given to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that. So we'll start by defining our meshes, I1, I2, and I3. Uh, let's notice that I3 is equal to I0. So when we solve the mesh equations, we'll have our answer. Let's also recognize that I1 is simply for angle 0. And with that, we'll go ahead and apply KVL starting at I2. KVL at I2. Um, I'm going to employ the method that I usually employ, uh, which is to assign uh, polarities to the terminals of each device. You don't really have to do this. Um, I just do it more out of habit than anything, and I, I think it helps me prevent from making mistakes with the signs. Okay, we'll start in the lower left-hand corner with I2, and we go through the negative terminal of a 1 ohm resistor, so that's minus 1, times I1 minus I2. We go through the positive terminal uh, of this negative impedance, so we'll just say negative, J2 times I2. Okay, and now we're going through a magnetically coupled inductor. So the first thing we'll do is just do the normal mesh um, component, which is going through the positive terminal. So that's plus J2 times I2. And notice that we've described a current entering the dotted terminal. So we have a voltage that is positive at the dotted terminal on the other inductor. And it just happens to be, coincidentally, that they're labeled that way anyway. And I labeled them, I chose this labeling for the polarities because it uh, obeyed the passivity rule. But um, ignoring these positive and negative signs, we have our own positive and negative sign that we're creating just because of the dots. Okay, current entering the dotted terminal, voltage at that that's positive at that dotted terminal. And that, um, applying the passivity rule, means that the current flows from positive to negative. And that means that I3 is actually in the correct direction. So we'll just use plus. And that's going to be a mutual inductance of J, I3. Finally, we end with the capacitor, and that's just plus, uh, oops, plus a minus, so we'll just put a minus in, minus J2 times I1, oh, I'm sorry, I2 minus I3. All of this equals zero. And you could um, reduce that if you wanted to.
I'm just going to move on and uh, start and continue with KVL at I3. Uh, again, I'll start in the lower left hand corner. Uh, we're going through the negative terminal uh, of a negative sign, so that's plus J2 times I2 minus I3. Uh, remember when you're using this convention of uh, assigning polarities you can always look back through your equations and uh, across the same terminals the I the um, mesh currents should be the same in the parentheses okay we're going through the mutual inductor now that's plus J2 I3 uh, we're going th through we have a current entering the dotted terminal so it creates a voltage on the other inductor such that it's positive at the dotted terminal and this also happens to um, coincide with the direction of I2 so it's just plus I2 uh, plus J the mutual inductance here um, times I2 and finally, I'm just going to lump these last two components together. Uh, they're both obeying the passivity rule. So plus 1 minus j times i3. And that equals 0. So we have three equations, counting this one, and three unknowns. It's a done deal. Um, rather than waste your time, uh, by putting it into the calculator. I'll just show you what you would put into the calculator to get this solution. Okay, C solve. And then there's your KVL at I2. There is, uh, sorry about that, KVL at I3. And uh, another little pro tip about these calculators. Um, in a previous video, I showed you how to use AND by finding it in one of the menus up here. But it's probably quicker to just type AND in. If you hit the alpha button twice, you'll see that the alpha lock goes on. And you can just type A, N, D. And the space button, which is nice for making it look neat, is this button right here. Okay, so finally, don't forget to put in the third equation, which is just this right here, and put in the variables. And when you run the calculation, you'll see uh, I've actually already run it here that z equals 1.30 at an angle of negative 77.47. So the answer to our question is I0 equals 1.3. at an angle of negative 77.47. And that's how you solve those kinds of equations. Good luck.